Welcome back Troglodytes to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Today we have a 1980 Gibson Sonics 180 Deluxe. This was kind of the predecessor to the studio, but like not quite as good as like a The Paul. Okay, so this is like the absolute bottom end of Gibson in the 80s. So if you're gonna buy this guitar and expect it to be as good as a Les Paul Standard or a Les Paul Custom, you're gonna be sorely mistaken. But if you want a pretty cool, affordable, vintage Gibson guitar, and you can accept some of the flaws of this guitar, and just learn to appreciate it for what it is, you're gonna enjoy this thing. Uh, I haven't had one of these in the shop for a long time because I had a bad experience with one of these selling it to someone. I shipped it overseas, the overseas buyer was just not happy with it. They were expecting a Les Paul custom and playability, sound and feel. That's not what one of these things is, so I haven't had one of these in the shop in a while for that reason. But I saw this one and it's like, you know what, how about we give it another try. Uh, once again, if you go into this, you know, thinking that it's, you know, a low-end Gibson, it's got the Gibson name, it's actually kind of got a cool logo on it. I mean, they're definitely playable, they've got some cool vintage vibe to them, but they're not your typical Les Paul. However, what these are is they are fantastic modding platforms. Uh, you've got a lot of room underneath this pickguard cavity, so you can mod it all you want and not really have to worry about it too much. So without further ado, let, let's take a look at this guitar. This guitar is definitely a player's grade guitar. You can see you've got quite a few nicks and dings here at the top. But you can see the unique Gibson logo. It says, The Gibson Guitar Company USA. Now, I believe these are uh, mahogany necks, but as you, you're going to see, it's a bolt-on neck. You've got your typical rosewood fretboard here, but, you know, average wear and tear. These tuners, they're not the greatest, I, I'm not going to lie. The top three usually go out of tune a little bit, so you might want to throw some Grovers on this one, because they're just kind of uh, cheapy shawlers on this. That would enhance the playability of the guitar. But I kind of fooled around with it a little bit. I mean, it stays in tune decent enough if you're playing at home, but if you're recording or playing live, yeah, you're definitely going to want to upgrade those tuners. You can see your truss rod cover there, Sonics 180. Uh, rosewood fretboard, as I was saying before. The frets do show a considerable amount of wear. I mean, these are good playing guitars. They've got kind of kind of chunkier 60s profile necks. I don't want to call it quite 50s. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe, but definitely feels closer to a 50s neck, so don't get this if you like the super slim 60s. They've got a little bit more roundedness to them, but I wouldn't call them super baseball bats either. But once again, you do have the, that fret wear there. Uh, it didn't really, I didn't really notice uh, any playability issues on it. You've got some fret buzzing just because it needs a proper setup, honestly. Uh, the action, the action's good on it. It could be lower down, but if you lower it, then you get some buzzing towards the lower registers. All right, this one does have its original pickups. They actually say Sonics 180 Deluxe on the back of them. Uh, I believe they call these velvet bricks. Uh, they sound pretty okay, but honestly, you know, if you wanted to put some different humbuckers in here, I, I don't think that would be against the against the law or anything. I mean, they work fine. They sound good. They've got kind of a little bit of a vintage vibe to them, but I would not be paying, you know, 300 bucks a set for one of these or anything. Uh, Besides that, everything has pretty much been replaced. This is a Japanese-made uh, ABR1 kind of styled rip-off type thing. And I'm going to guess the tailpiece has been replaced too. You can see there's quite a bit of pitting to the uh, chrome hardware. All the pots have been replaced with uh, 500k Japanese pots. So I, somebody had a thing for Japanese stuff, but this is a USA guitar. But as you're seeing, lots of nicks, dings, and scratches. I mean, this was a player's guitar, and they are. They're good player's guitars. Like, if you're just starting off, and you want, you know, the 70s and 80s vibe, they, they are valuable options, because 
they're fairly low cost. I mean, if you're gonna pay, you know, six to $800 for one of these, uh, it, it better be like a silver burst or other rare finish and you better be a collector. But if you're picking one of these up for, you know, 400 bucks or so, you're, you're gonna be okay. We'll look at the back of the net here. Uh, serial number is uh, 82890778, which makes this one a late 1980, uh, about 278th in production for the day. Made in USA. Once again, the tuners are kind of garbage. You might want to replace them. I mean, they do work. They stay in tune for the most part, but you might want to replace them. But you do have the cool 80s volute here, 70s and 80s volute, so that's something you got going for it. And once again, kind of a, a chunkier 60s profile, but it's got lots of uh, nicks and dings as you're seeing here in the light. I mean, don't expect a mint condition example on this one. Uh, again, this is a bolt-on neck, the cheapest of the Gibson line of the day. Sometimes these don't have a good joining factor, but honestly, I think this one is pretty solid as far as the neck joint. You don't have any uh, cracks or repairs here, which sometimes you will see on these. But overall, I mean, the guitar's in well-played condition. Especially on the back here, you can see that the finish was rubbed off. Now, the body is not actual wood. It's like, I forget what it is, honestly. It's like a rosin core, I think they called it. So it's not your typical wood body either. Uh, this long strip, it looks like there used to be a sticker there. That's this kind of sticker residue. And you've got lots of wear on the sides. So honestly, a Sonics, if you can get these, you know, under 400 bucks, they're a good value. Anything over that, I would say, yeah, that, that's probably too much. Unless you're a collector. If you only have, you know, $400, I, I, I would still suggest one of these. Uh, get it set up properly, and they can be awesome playing guitars for cheap. But, you know, if you've got, you know, a couple hundred more dollars lying around, go find a Paul. It's about a ten times better instrument than uh, one of these, but these still have their place in the low-end market. This one weighs 9 pounds 5 ounces. It's definitely body heavy. Something else I forgot to mention is the uh, strap buttons are also replaced. And uh, the knobs are potentially replaced. They just don't look as aged as I would expect, but they do kind of have the bold print that it would originally have. Something else to notice is there's a little tiny bit of separation here in the body. You can feel it kind of where they joined it. Or maybe, I'm not really sure what that is, but it is kind of like a deep scratch but it's not coming apart or anything. All right, the face of the headstock doesn't seem to glow uh, the way I would think, so that might have been retouched. I, I highly doubt it, though. I'm not sure why it's not glowing. But the body does glow just fine. It might be that they didn't actually lacquer the front of the headstock on these, but they did lacquer the bodies, as you can see here. There's a lot of wear and tear. It doesn't look like the back of the neck really glows, so I guess it's possible somebody might have refinished or spray painted. I'm not sure. I mean, it feels pretty good. I honestly didn't expect that. But yeah, it looks like the neck has been uh, refinished some way. And you can see the back of the guitar. It's glowing as it should. Once again, that's the uh, sticker shadow there. And you've got some wear through there. Now that we know what she looks like, let's hear how she sounds.
you might want to be the next owner of this 1980 Gibson Sonics 180 Deluxe, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S, or check out the eBay or Reverb listing. And if you're watching this as it's being posted, uh, next Sunday, Ohio Guitar Show will be there. I'll probably bring this thing. I'm guessing that's where it'll sell. So uh, get your offers in if you want this guitar. All right, we'll catch you next time. Bye.